My name is Dr Jennifer Broom. Um, Respirology has just published a commentary I've written on guideline relevance, diagnostic uncertainty, fear and hierarchy as barriers to optimal prescribing of antibiotics and respiratory infections. And I'm here with Dr Michael Putt, who's a respiratory physician and an intensivist. Um, Michael, what do you think as a respiratory physician about the barriers we've discussed in the paper um, to optimising antibiotic prescribing in respiratory medicine? Thanks, Jennifer. Um, look, I agree with all of the points you've made as, as far as the barriers to optimisation of prescribing in respiratory infections. I think the two uh, things I'd focus on would be um, the use of guidelines, um, which I think people uh, sometimes uh, don't believe or interpret the literature differently related to the guidelines and also um, often if they have vast years of experience may not necessarily think they need the guidelines as far as helping them prescribe um, and also there's often a, a discussion about whether those guidelines which are sort of generic for large or vast areas of um, Australia potentially that they don't necessarily equate to what happens locally as far as antibiograms and um, resistance patterns. I think the other thing that impacts uh, a fair bit on the prescribing in, in this, in this uh, area is, is the fact there's a lot of diagnostic uncertainty when managing respiratory infections and that can be related to you know, simple things as whether it's viral or bacterial and as you've said whether there's colonisation or actually true infection. And I think oftentimes the diagnostic tools we use aren't always helpful in, in being able to sort of lock down a diagnosis to help your prescribing. And clearly different physicians have different um, willingness, I suppose, uh, to, to um, deal with their uncertainty and some people are less, uh, less capable of doing that, so maybe will over-prescribe with broader, broader spectrum antibiotics or continue antibiotics for longer. Um, particularly as we know we may not get an organism in up to 50% of the time even with, with um, you know, clear diagnoses such as COPD exacerbations or community acquired pneumonia. Um, so I think diagnostic uncertainty and whether um, clinicians are happy to use guidelines are probably the two uh, issues that I would focus on from what you've written in your article. Can I ask you how we, if we as senior clinicians um, don't necessarily believe guidelines or follow guidelines, and um, you're talking about risk as well, how do we teach junior doctors if we don't follow guidelines and risk is a big component? How do we influence the prescribing of junior doctors in that way? And that's a very good question, and I think that's, uh, out of everything you've put in the article, that's probably one of the most important things uh, to focus on is how we get across um, as senior clinicians how we how we get across to the juniors um, of, of how we prescribe and you're right I mean I think uh, it is very difficult I think it's more than just education as far as teaching them this, these are the antibiotics you should use for certain infections but I think there's lots of areas of medicine where you're uncertain and I suppose there has to be some way that you can uh, show the juniors what your clinical reasoning is to make a decision. Now, if you go outside of guidelines, I think you have to have a reasonably good reason as to why you go outside the guidelines, whether you um, interpret the literature differently or your, your um, interpretation of the guidelines. If it is different, you have to be able to tell them why you're prescribing differently rather than just prescribing completely outside the guidelines. Um, but I think Clinical reasoning is one of the very difficult things to be able to actually teach junior doctors mm -hmm. um, and it obviously comes with experience but um, again you have to teach them about the risk as well so I suppose if um, again if you've got a fairly reasonable um, idea of the risk of a certain infection in a clinical situation that's another thing that um, I suppose it's on the job training and not necessarily sort of just um, stock standard education for juniors. But I think it's very, your, your point's well taken. It's very difficult uh, in those situations often to be able to educate them how to prescribe. And how do you think um, respiratory physicians um, 
can move forward with um, progressing you know, quality improvement in this area? So that's a good question again. I think, you know, in all, all areas of antimicrobial sort of stewardship and prescribing, it has to be driven from within the subspecialty. And uh, I find this also within my intensive care practice that really f to move forward, it has to be done from within rather than, um, you know, necessarily being uh, told how to prescribe by, by other specialties. Um, and again, there has to be some fairly regular quality assurance type procedures with auditing of prescribing and in respiratory, particularly in things like community acquired pneumonia and, and COPD exacerbations would be the two areas I think would be uh, of most benefit for, for QA activities. Thanks very much. Thank you.